Hello friends and welcome to the second session of foundation engineering series and today we are going to discuss some of the very important terminologies in foundation engineering. So let's start. So here what you are seeing is a situation before a foundation has been constructed that is just soil the natural terrain as it used to exist. Right. So you can see the she this is the shear stress diagram uh, due to the soil. So the pressure would be maximum at this red line. Red line shows the uh, shows the plane on which our prospective foundation is going to rest. Okay. Now let's see what happens after the foundation and the superstructure has been constructed can see that there is a change in the shear stress distribution the loading at the base of the foundation has increased on the on the plane has increased which now the stress on this plane on which the foundation rests is due to what there are three components involved one is the weight of the superstructure right second is the weight of the foundation and third is the weight of the of the soil column just above the foundation or we can call it the overburden which can be seen by this diagram now if you want I have made a model for you to show the same thing so let's see so this is something like this say so this is the excavated portion and my foundation is this right the black one you can see this is my column right and now I have my backfill or the overburden. I'll just fill it. So this becomes something like this. You consider this white material as the soil, right? Which exists just around that foundation. I have shown it just to show that uh, I have used this to show it through a different color and now here and here is my foundation resting on this and on this soil right so, so the loading or the pressure intensity at the base of the footing is due to the, these three components which I have said. So I am again enlisting these that the total pressure on the soil at the base of the footing is due to weight of the superstructure, the weight of the footing and the overburden. Now comes the first term that is the gross loading intensity. Right. So suppose the footing is rested at a depth df right so qg that is the gross loading intensity would be total weight of it would be total weight of total weight of the superstructure the self weight of foundation right the self weight of foundation and the weight of soil fill over the footing that is number 3 you just see number 3 that is the weight of the soil fill over the footing or we call it the overburden so these three are the components let's move to the next term now now one thing you need to understand is that the deformation of the soil beneath the footing is due to the net loading intensity that is the weight of the foundation and the weight of the superstructure and not due to the soil that existed above it or that now also exists because prior to that prior to that there was soil but it didn't so but it didn't cause any deformation was there any deformation on, on this plane no overburden was there since years but it is only the weight of the foundation and the weight of the superstructure that uh, that can cause the deformation right so therefore we need the term net loading intensity so it is the deformation of uh, so it is the difference between gross loading intensity and the weight of soil fill over the footing 
so it is denoted by qn that is the net loading intensity is equal to qg that is the gross loading intensity minus gamma df so this the slide explains the same thing i have shown different components 1 2 and 3 right and qn is equal to qg minus gamma df right let's move on now next term is the ultimate bearing capacity right so now this is the plane this red line this red line shows the plane like it is a so it, I'm showing this in section so so it is a line so on which the footing is going to rest now let us consider that we have considered a, uh, we have constructed a G plus 1 building so the shear stress distribution would be something like this right so next year we constructed another story over the first floor so now we have G plus 2 so the shear stress at the base of the footing would increase and you can see the same thing by by this broadened base of this diagram so now this is G plus 2 now the next year again construction takes place and it becomes G plus 3 so the base further broadens the shear stress has increased then G plus 4 and at G plus 4 when you constructed that the soil beneath the footing fails okay so that was not a permissible load the soil should shouldn't have been uh, loaded for that okay so we may consider that the ultimate bearing capacity was some somewhere when the gross load was equal to G plus 3 right so roughly it is the ultimate bearing capacity this is an example just to make you understand so what is the ultimate bearing capacity the maximum gross intensity that the that the soil can support before it fails in shear before it fails in shear is the ultimate bearing capacity and it is denoted by q u q u q g is the gross bearing pressure qn is the net bearing pressure or the net loading intensity then qu is the ultimate bearing capacity and next term is the net ultimate bearing capacity so it is the ma maximum net intensity of loading net intensity of loading means you are subtracting the uh, the pressure due to the overburden or due to the soil which is just above the footing right so the maximum net intensity of loading that soil can support before failing in shear you keep in mind this word shear is being used over here is the net ultimate bearing capacity QNU and QNU that is the net ultimate bearing capacity is equal to QU that is the ultimate bearing capacity minus gamma DF right so now the bearing capacity not only depends on the uh, on the properties of soil but also on the shape of the footing the depth of the footing the mode of the loading which are all taken into account in the Terzaghi's bearing capacity equations now factor of safety always while designing RCC buildings steel structures we use factor of safety so here also we need to use while uh, ascertaining the capacity of soil a factor of safety because soil is a natural material and anything that is formed in nature is complex and there is an uncertainty involved and we cannot exactly estimate the strength or the capacity of the soil so generally here we take the factor of safety of 2.5 to 3 and we factor the net ultimate bearing capacity with this factor and we get the net safe bearing capacity so net net ultimate bearing capacity so we get the net safe bearing capacity so qns that is the net safe bearing capacity is equal to qnu by f f is between 2.5 to 3 now gross safe bearing capacity so that is qs gross safe bearing capacity here, here instead of net we take the gross intensity of loading 
uh, which which the soil can support without safely support without failing in shear so qs here i have written ns but i am striking out this n so qs is equal to qns that is the net safe bearing capacity plus in gross we are just again adding the loading intensity due to overburden gamma df now next term is see up till now we have taken into account the shear but there is settlement also because uh, while in the previous uh, uh, previous video while defining foundation what we said a foundation is an element which is able to transfer load to the substratum without overstressing the soil and without causing settle beyond a uh, settlement beyond the permissible limit so up till now we have uh, we have we have seen that our soil does not get overstressed so if the loading intensity is uh, is less than the net safe bearing capacity so we are taking taking into account that uh, we are taking care that our soil is not getting overstressed but what about the settlement right so for that we have the term safe bearing pressure that is q and rho so it is the maximum net intensity of loading which can be allowed on uh, on the soil that is beneath the foundation so that the settlement is is within the permissible limit or we can in, a, in other words it is not exceeding the permissible limit right here we do not factor factor it for safety right now allowable bearing pressure that is qa net qa net so it is the maximum net intensity of loading that can be imposed on the soil without causing any shear failure and without causing any excessive settlement that is beyond the permissible limit then that maximum net intensity of loading would be the allowable bearing pressure now here we have the two terms one is the net safe bearing capacity and second is the safe bearing pressure so the minimum of these two terms would be our allowable bearing capacity qa net right so qa net is minimum of qns and qn rho right i think this is clear to you so today we have discussed the terms gross loading pressure or the gross loading intensity then net loading intensity right wherein we deduce the where we not deduce deduct the pressure due to the overburden then the ultimate bearing capacity qu which is the maximum loading uh, gross loading capacity uh, after which the soil would uh, will fail in shear then we have the net ultimate bearing capacity wherein again we deduct the pressure due to the overburden and here we, we use the term net loading intensity then net safe bearing capacity wherein we involve the we factor the net ultimate bearing capacity by a factor of safety then gross safe bearing capacity that is qs again uh, we take the gross loading intensity and then factor it right now we uh, we add the overburden to the qns that is the net safe bearing capacity then we have the safe bearing pressure up to the term net safe bearing capacity gross safe bearing capacity we were just considering the shear criteria but in order to take into account or take care of the settlement that the settlement is not beyond the permissible limit we have the safe bearing pressure qns this term right so it is the net loading again the net loading intensity uh, which the soil can take take up without uh, without settling beyond the permissible limit. So these are the eight terms, and the eighth term that is the allowable bearing pressure, which is the minimum of net safe bearing capacity and safe bearing pressure. That is the shear criterion and the settlement criterion. So that is the allowable bearing pressure. So hope these terms are clear to you if there are any doubts kindly raise those in the comment section and if you like this video kindly like it share it and subscribe this channel so it would be very helpful to you in understanding the foundation engineering thank you so much thank you thank you